be in Vietnam is called the Dong. The Dong. I'd love to have so many Dongs in Vietnam, dude. Bro, I got my pockets full of Dong. <laughs> Welcome back to Real Talk, everybody. <laughs> We've been hot mic and once again. Yep. That was the whole plan. God. You mentioned. I think it literally started with you saying, "Oh, they got shillings in Uganda." <laughs> yeah, I love. I love shillings. That's dope. We made it back, John. We made it back. I'm so excited. We're here for episode two, isn't it? That's a two. miracle in itself. <laughs> That's like the most episodes we've ever done of a podcast. <laughs> Actually, no. I think. I think literally three episodes is the most episodes we've done on a podcast. Yeah, we're gonna um, beat that. We, I mean, we're going to have to. We have to get to at least four. <laughs> John, did you see the responses of the podcast? Uh, you sent me some, but yeah. again, no one knows who I am. So <laughs> they all went to you. Yeah, everyone messaged me because they didn't know who John was. Yeah, they don't know who I am. Um, yeah, wow. Welcome back. We made it for episode two. Um, this, it, it was insane. It was insane seeing how everyone responded to the podcast. Um, super happy about that. I had many people messaging me and... Uh, like on discord and stuff like that talking about how good the podcast was which is insane um we haven't uh, we mentioned last podcast that we've made plenty of different podcasts and then in the last episode we were like talking about how we didn't really feel like it had a purpose so we just never continued it but then with people messaging us being like hang on let me let me grab a one specific quote um actually okay so <laughs> this is an actual quote <laughs> Oh, no. a- actually a bussin podcast mixed between laughs and actually learning about the Roman Empire. That's good. That's good. They we did say it, it was bussin. It was bussin. <laughs> bussin podcast. I-, I would love to be Can able put to that in the just- description. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be it. It's not going to say like two friends, Jack and John, learning about history. Actually it's going to be podcast. actually bussin podcast. <laughs> no, it's so cool. I-, I would love to be able to get like the feedback and be able to like list it off after like every episode or just like have one thing because it's on Spotify now. Um, I'm working on getting it on Apple podcasts as well. It's a little bit more of a difficult um, process to, to get it going, but I want to check real quick if I can find the podcast. Cause real talk, I don't know if you guys know real talk is a very um popular name. Which Hopefully we didn't we realize when we, <laughs> when we made the podcast. Hopefully we don't have to uh, to copyright it at any point. Mm. I'm sure it's um, fine. Mine comes up straight away because I'm following Real Talk. Yeah, same. Like you should, guys should be. <laughs> if you're not Spotify, following Real, T- Real Talk. Um, make sure you vote it five stars if you can. That'd be fantastic. Get us to uh, anywhere near prominent inside of the uh, history section of um, podcasts. That'd, That'd be, be really sick. Cool. I did actually update it, so now it's actually like a history comedy podcast, awesome. not just a history podcast. I don't know if that's fully gone through. I just checked, but that's okay. We'll, have a, we'll, we'll check that after. <laughs> God the, damn it. After the um, uh, yeah, no, it's it's super cool, like with ev- what everyone was saying and stuff like that. I actually listened to the podcast while I was driving to work. I I have a new job now, but with my old job, it's a very long drive. It's like an hour long drive. I was listening to the podcast on the way there. I was f- like making like us making me laugh was so funny to me because when we were talking about the battle pope was just <laughs> it was sending just, it down there no it was so funny dude <laughs> like there are some things that we would come up with and i'm like i don't even know how we got there like was there a battle pope running it down mid with nothing but a shorty um we're just funny, man. What, what I can guess. I say? We're just pretty good. That's just why you guys should vote it five stars on Spotify. Vote it five stars. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. I think it's like we can do a poll on like if you enjoyed it or like you can. Is that a thing you can do? Yeah, I think it's like a Q and A. Actually, I'm gonna click on the podcast. Real yeah, quick you'll have to. You'll have to explain it because I'm not. I'm. I'm not very. I don't really understand it very well. From what I remember, when I was listening to it, um, I was able to like do something i think i could like swipe up or something like that and it was like um it would give me the option to like like send out a poll to people i i think it was more so to like respond to a poll but i think i can set that up when we're publishing it so we're we're new to this stuff guys we're still figuring it out should i get should i get the spotify code tattooed on me do you think that would be insane. <laughs> I, was literally, I thought that that's what you were going to say, and I was like, oh, no way he's going to say that. That'd be pretty dope, right? <laughs> you just get the waveform, where it's like people get like their favorite songs in a waveform, and it's just Roman Empire in Fortnite terms, just in a in a waveform across your arm. 
at least at the moment, it's only classes history for me, but it might oh, it might be different. I think, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, 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 it did say when I tried to click more like this, it didn't work. So maybe it's just up changing now or something. Yeah. Who knows? Either way, welcome back. Welcome um, back. We made it back. Welcome back. We did. Um, was there any other feedback or anything? Um, any, any, I just kind of wanted want to, to, yeah, I wanted to sort of talk about what we had mentioned in the last podcast. So I, I said to John right before we started recording that I was mentioning how in the last episode, I guess I got kind of existential to, um, uh, to put it in, in John's words, um, where I was talking about how I would see buildings and be like, I'm never going to go into that building. And I kind of left it at that because John was like, did you go into one of the buildings? And I was like, oh, we'll save it for the podcast. So I, f- I had one of those realizations while I was like, I was just driving through the town. Um, and I kind of thought about that and I was like, oh, fuck. Like, what if I, what if I did do that? What if I went into one of these random buildings? And I happened to look to my right of being like, Oh yeah, let, let's go into this building. And I looked, and the building was called uh, National Boys Choir. <laughs> so I didn't do that. <laughs> oh, I think you're going to tell you when it's the National Boys Choir. I didn't feel comfortable going into the National Boys Choir. Why not? I, you got a hell of a set of pipes on you, mate. I, t- I don't think I do. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon you smash it. It's um the National Boys Choir. I didn't know what to expect when I went in there. You like can see him performing in Sydney next week, guys. <laughs> I was wishing that I could kind of just be like, uh, it, people mention like the fly on the wall where they can just be there and be like, I'm not intruding or anything like that. But I didn't know how to walk into the National Boys Choir and be like, Do I they just, just want to let be a people fly walk on into a building like that. I don't think so. You don't think so? <laughs> they probably have a bouncer. Yeah, you reckon? <laughs> yeah. The boys bouncer. Yeah, the, the boys choir bouncer. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Does he wear the cloak like they all do? Like that cool little garb thing they all wear? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they wear like a robe, don't they? Like they're assassins? No, <laughs> like, a, like a robe. Like a, like a priest or something. Um, Am I wrong? I swear I, they do. I know what you're talking about, but I don't you think You know that, that white, popular. white cloak thing? Hmm. I swear they wear those in boys' choirs. I might be wrong. We're circling back to Battle Pope once again, I think. Oh, he's accident. always on my mind. <laughs> Just running it down, man. I um, There was one thing I wanted to show you before we got into what you were going to teach me today. Okay, um, yes. I, I re-downloaded TikTok. Um, Uh-oh. Just specifically for when I'm shitting. So I can send Jack. Finally, he can respond to my <laughs> countless TikToks I've sent him. Yeah. Um. I, I saw a video pop up and it was just like the ones where it's just like a collection of photos or whatever. And I want you to just kind of scroll through this yeah, and sure. I'm going to put it like I'm going to put the audio with it and maybe like voiceover if I can. But um, this is what this is what it was. <laughs> Wait, this is from the Liberal Party of Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Lazy Labour. <laughs> So <laughs> what the f- <laughs> So this was the Liberal Party of Australia um mentioning on TikTok there will be no Fortnite OG update um in Australia. It will not be getting released in Australia. Instead we will have this. Do you want to list off a couple of them? Yeah, so we've got um this is what we get instead. We get lazy labor and we've got Albo Albanese sitting on uh on a pool here. We've got tilted taxes with uh, Albanese sitting on a bunch of gold thrones. Risky rents, 600 per week. Oh, fuck. Oh, we've got whaling wages <laughs> and uh, fatal fuel as well. Mm. Uh, and then it's also authorized by Ahurst Liberal Party, Canberra. Um, yeah, look, you know what? I think I might have one to show you as well, but it's a bit of a longer video, so I'll have to send it to you and we'll, we'll talk about it maybe next uh, next podcast. Mm-hmm. But um, this one is by um, her 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 Majesty uh, Miss Pauline Hansen released a four minute long animation about people playing Minecraft. Is there volume um, on it? Uh, yes, okay. uh, it's a long video. I'll, I've sent it to you. Okay, yeah. but I reckon we react to this one maybe next podcast. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, we can do that. You'll you'll have to watch the whole thing because it yeah. slaps. I will. I'll um. Yeah, well, I'll download it and I'll put the audio in and stuff like that. I realized that with this this Fortnite update one that I mentioned, there is I don't think there is audio. I think it's just music. Right. But um, that's why I wanted you to list it off. Basically, yeah, the Liberal Party of Australia on instead, TikTok. yeah, on the official TikTok, Liberal Party. Um, instead of 
I don't know, doing some sort of campaigning or something, I guess. They they instead said that it was a photo of a guy in a mirror that just said, hey, we're not getting the Fortnite OG update, which I've been playing the shit out of. Um, we're not getting it in Australia. Instead, we are getting and then a, a series of slides um, for <coughs> new, new uh, locations on Fortnite that just had to do with uh, the current economic crisis yeah. <laughs> that we're we're facing across the planet, by the way, not just in Australia. Um, yeah. Just for um, our viewer uh, listeners that are not in Australia, Liberal Party is not akin to the liberal mm. uh, like uh, political stance. Um, liberal Party is just another name for what is realistically the Conservative Party in Australia. Mm. Um, whereas, you know, uh, obviously they'll they'll put in things that they, they use the name liberal uh, because I don't know, that's just what they were founded as, but they're just the conservative party. So when we say liberal party, we don't mean someone that you actually want to vote for. Mm. Um, yeah. It's, it's quite backwards here. Like mm. I remember when the, I guess like the elections or whatever were going on and people are like, no, don't vote liberal. And I was like, what's, huh? what's up? <laughs> like, <laughs> What? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's confusing, but yeah. So the Liberal Party, who are currently the opposition, they are not in power, have decided they're going to uh, really captivate the minds of the young <laughs> with a with a banger TikTok that really, they made. Really wrangle the, the little guys in <laughs> the, the little Fortnite. Kids. All right, watch this, boys. This will get them all voting for us. Couple of banger of Fortnite memes on TikTok. We gather everybody together, every, and we. We do we do the Travis Scott uh, event, but instead it's just the Liberal Party. The Liberal Party. The Liberal yeah. Party dancing it's to sicko mode. It's a debate. <laughs> it's a Parliament debate live on Fortnite. It's a Parliament debate. But was that was is there nothing else that anyone said? It was just that it was a bus in podcast. That's no, there was there was a couple more. It was just like that was just the one you wanted to highlight. Yeah, I, I think it was just like that was the message that I had open right, at the well, time. So. What what Jack is saying is we need some banger quotes that we can put on, on yeah. our podcast so if you guys have some banger quotes that you want to say uh about the podcast that it's like great or whatever uh shoot them to jack and maybe he'll feature it in next week's uh absolute banger of a podcast i'm gonna see if i can actually look up like um how you specifically like leave a review on spotify podcast because i know i don't know if you can yeah. leave like a word because i know that you i'm pretty sure you can on like apple oh can you um uh how to leave written no. Well, today while Jack does that, um, we're going to be talking a little bit, I thought, um, because it's quite a deep and, and very uh, documented period of history. thought we'd talk a little bit this week about the Pacific War that took place from uh, mid-1930s to mid-1940s, um, only because it features Australia quite a lot, and in modern history especially. Um, Australia has... Um, mixed approaches when it comes to to anything like that and i thought it would be interesting jack if you don't know a huge amount to talk about kind of the involvement there and why it was quite important to uh realistically the existence of the pacific as we know it now um i thought that'd be a cool thing to talk about um yeah so that's what we're going to be learning about today if that's something you guys are interested in or you want to know more about Make sure that you let us know, and we can talk a little deeply about the 30s and 40s in the in the 1900s. Mm. Um, as uh, I'm sure anyone that has ever thought about uh, Google knows <laughs> that during the 30s and 40s, quite a bit happened around the world. So um, if you guys want us to talk about that kind of period of history, let us know. Or if you're more interested in another one also, uh, let us know. Just message Jack, uh, mm. because apparently no one knows who I'm now joking. <laughs> um, just message Jack and... Um, He'll pass it on to us, and um, we'll do some research guess, and teaching like, on those topics. If you don't have me on like Discord or something like that, because there are, you know, a, a lot of the people that do listen to the podcast are friends that mm. have me on Discord and stuff like that. If you don't have me on Discord, I'm not going to accept your friend request if I don't know you. Um, but you can probably just like message me on Twitter or X or whatever, because mm. um, that's yeah, that, that I'll probably respond on there. And we'll put the links to those where? Are there links to those on somewhere? On underneath, I presume, on YouTube and we then can, on Spotify? Yeah, we can add our socials and stuff on Spotify, which cool. I did not do on the um on the original one. Because we don't have like 
real talk Twitter account no, or anything like no. that. that. That hasn't really been the plan because I don't want to go ahead and We're just like, taking it as we go. Yeah. Right? I don't want to like boot up all of this shit because it's like, yeah, we don't have like a fucking production team. It's two mm. white guys making a podcast, which. Yes. <laughs> I love those. Give me more of those. Yeah. Severe lack of those in the world. Um, but yeah. So national just, shortage at the moment. Oil. You can, um, Wood. <laughs> white guys. White podcast. guys. Podcast, yeah. Um, yeah. So you can probably message me on Twitter and I might see it um, because sometimes I just like don't get notifications, but I'll check. Mm. Um, but yeah. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, with so that being said, let's... 15 minutes in and I'm excited to learn. Yeah? yeah. We're learning today. Learning about the Pacific War. Um, the Pacific War specifically that we're talking about because I'm sure there were plenty of them, but the one, the big one that is... Uh, uh, quote named uh, was during uh, from nineteen. I want to say forty one, um, but I'm uh, I am sort of on the fence. It might have been forty. Mm-hmm. Nineteen. I want to say not forty one. Actually, yes, it was forty one. Forty one is when it technically started. Mm-hmm. However, yeah. So nineteen forty one is when. Uh, the Japanese Empire at the time um, attacked Pearl Harbor, um, Mm. pulling America into the war and also doing what was called the Thrust South, which is when they took many of these islands. Oh, guys, Um, we got a map now. We are. Sorry. (laughs) It was the one thing Jack said not to do. Um, (laughs) So we have a map. Uh, If I say these islands, Jack will correct me and I'll point out what they were. But most of uh, what is now Indonesia, Mm -hmm. um, what at the time was called Indochina, but uh, Southeast Asia, so Thailand, Vietnam, this area, um, and the Philippines here as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of these islands here, not to mention pretty much the majority of the Pacific islands, the small ones. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of combat took place on those. So um, Japan at the time uh, was starved for resources, wrapped up in a war with China that they started in 1936 Mm -hmm. um, over what was called the uh, Marco Polo Bridge Incident. So in 1931, the Japanese invaded Manchuria, this bit up here, um, which is just above Korea for the listeners at home. Mm Um, if you have a map in front yeah, of you. I was going to say, so that's, that's one thing we're going to have to clarify a lot. So we got the map purely because I, I I mentioned to John, I don't think I've ever looked at a map in my life. Like I've looked at globes and kind of spun them and just been like, oh, thing like spin and circle. <laughs> but like I haven't really properly looked at a map. So I'm I'm very fascinated by it the colors and stuff um john yeah so john's gonna be like pointing out a lot of shit and um, if you guys want to follow along at home i'll give you brief kind of pointers or you can just whip up a google page also yeah like message john on discord and ask for the link to the map that he bought because it's a nice big one you can get a lot of um... it is wham <laughs> it is huge so we're not gonna we're not gonna be missing anything All vastly right, so, underestimated the size of the so map. in 1931 <laughs> this was uh before or like during like germany's rise to power um this is when uh the big mustache man was kind of getting his whole groove on in Germany. Yeah, um, right. Japan at the time had uh, was an empire. It had been an empire for quite some time after what was called the Meiji Restoration, when the emperor overthrew the shogunate. Um, so the daimyos were dissolved, the samurai were removed, military coup took place, emperor in charge. So emperors in charge, they westernized very quickly. They went from what was practically farmland in Iceland to mm-hmm. an industrial power base in Asia. When they did this, um, Japan wanted to be seen as a major player in both Asia and the world. And how does it do this? By copying the major players. And what were the major players doing at the time, Jack? That's right. They were colonizing. Mm. So what did Japan want to do? Colonize. Colonize. So it took sections of the Pacific, both of Germany in World War I, because Japan actually fought with the Allies in World War I, joining the Entente, helping the UK and the French defeat Germany in the Pacific. I know not many people knew that. Um, So Japan did that. They took the state of Qingdao. And I want to say what is now Dailan, but at the time it was Port Arthur, possibly? Unless that was down here. I don't remember. It was a port up here that uh, Germany owned. Port Arthur was in Australia. Port Arthur was down here, I think. I think it still is. I don't remember. Wait, what am, no, what that's am I Port thinking Moresby. of? No, Port Moresby. That's Port Moresby. Port Wait, Arthur was here. Yeah, what was I thinking about that was the mass shooting in Australia? Was that... That's in Tasmania somewhere. Yeah, what was it called? 
don't know. I, um, I want to say Pearl Harbor, but was no, that Pearl something Harbor. else? <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was not I was the like, shoot. I was, like, I was like, there was something, because I remember hearing somebody say Pearl Harbor, and I was like, no. <laughs> no, that's something else. We'll get to Pearl Harbor in a minute. Um, so Japan took a bunch of land off Germany, because Germany actually owned uh, cities in China as well. Um, imperial cities. So okay. they took Qingdao and um, uh, something up here, right, right here where my finger is, um, at the end of this railway. Um, they took that land, um, and then they also invaded Korea. They uh, annexed Korea. Um, by doing this, Japan had seized what it deemed similar to what Germany was uh, using as an excuse during World War II, um, livable space, because Japan was crowded, it didn't have enough natural resources. Um, it was a small island in the Pacific, and it requires space, is what it was kind of saying. Now, in 1931, it illegally invades Manchuria off China, because China is in a communist civil war at the time. Japan did? Yes, Japan took Manchuria, which is this mm -hmm. area here, all this blue here, off China. They illegally invaded it. The what was called League of Nations at the time, which was the early UN, um, they were in charge of making sure no one did stupid shit mm -hmm. anyway didn't do fucking anything. They walked in, took it, right? Mm. China at the time is in its own civil war against the communists. They were trying to fight off the communists. There was the nationalists, or the republic, quote-unquote, of China at the time, who was in charge of it all. Um, now, is that problematic that you said republic, quote-unquote? <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> get um, <laughs> anyway um, so the communist Chinese uh, were fighting the, uh, at the time, Nationalist Party of China. Um, while they were fighting this war, um, the Japanese stepped in and took Manchuria. Mm -hmm. um, flash forward about five years, the Chinese Communist Party um, had to do their long march when they were defeated in the south all the way to the north, killing millions of their own people, starving, dying because the national they were fleeing the nationalist army. Mm. Communist China set up a base up here, continued to fight a guerrilla fight, while the Nationalist Party of China attempted to uh, fix its situation, because many of its states had split off into independent forces, uh, warlords, as they were called at the time. Um, now, Japan, in 1936, um, after the uh, Marco Polo Bridge incident, which took place around here, just above Beijing. And just um, below Manchuria. Just below Manchuria, yes, nice, which Japan owned at the time. Um, if you're following along at home, I know it's a bit quick. Um, I'm just kind of shooting out the start because this isn't technically the Pacific War, but I'm trying to outline the mm. kind of situation Japan was in at the time. Yeah, right. um, Marco Polo Bridge Incident, named after the famous Venetian man Marco Polo, who traveled to China um, and was kind of hanging about with uh, Kublai Khan, who was the leader of the kind of first official, quote unquote, current uh, like state of China. Right. Um the Japanese dressed up as a bunch of Chinese people and shot at their own people across a bridge and then were like, the Chinese did it and then invaded them. Um, so in 1936, the Jap Japanese launched their official invasion of China. Wow. Now, we flash forward to 1941. The war in Europe is raging. France is fucked. Czechoslovakia, <laughs> fucked. Yugoslavia, <laughs> fucked. <laughs> North Africa, fucked. Um Got any more? Lay them on me. Poland, fucked. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Here, let, me point, let me point at a place on the map and tell me Belgium, if it's fucked or not. Denmark, Norway, <laughs> fucked. Everyone, <laughs> fucked. Right? State of it, it's a mess. Okay. Greece, fucked. Um, all of this, it's it's all German. Mm -hmm. um, Japan still fighting this war against China. China holding out. They're about here at this point. Mm -hmm. About halfway in. Um, the uh, Unfor uh, well, this was like a quote name, so I'm just going to say it. The Rape of Nanjing happened around this time. This was when China captured the city of Nanjing and practically burnt it to the ground and killed the millions and millions of people in it, destroying everything. Um, it is probably one of the worst massacres we've ever seen in combat in modern history. Yes. And no one talks about it because Japan was subjugated by America afterwards. And do you know what happened after World War II? That's right, the Cold War. Because mm. Japan were the good guys in the Cold War, which means we don't mm. talk about their war crimes in World War II. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, the rape of Nanjing happens. Um, the capturing of Shanghai happens. China is in a real sticky situation. The communists that they were fighting have put aside their differences for now and have joined with the Nationalist Party mm -hmm. to defend China. Yeah, right. So everyone in China fighting the Japanese. 
the Japanese at this point have a huge amount of men, army, resources invested in China. They're trying to win desperately. So they need to seek more resources. Over time, the United States of America, URA under Roosevelt, have been slowly squeezing the ability to ship oil to Japan. Um, Japan has no natural oil. They have no natural uh, fuel resources. But they have the largest navy on the planet at the time. And what a navy's runoff, Jack. Fuel. How do we run a navy without fuel? Mm. The United States won't ship it to us anymore. Neither will anyone else. Germany has no fuel. And if they did, it wouldn't be able to get to us in time. So where's all the fuel? That's right. Indonesia. Singapore. Vietnam. Huge, huge oil deposits. So, well, at the time, Indonesia was owned by the Dutch. Singapore, the British, the Philippines, America. All of these countries, colonial quote-unquote land, they were also, strangely enough, tied up in a war in Europe. The Americans yet were not in the war. However, the Japanese saw a moment to strike when they broke the American ciphers and they knew that the American fleet would be in Hawaii, in Pearl Harbor. John's using the tap and stick. I'm using a stick and I'm pointing at Hawaii. (laughs) (laughs) So the Japanese knew the American fleet would be in Hawaii. Or half of it, most of it. Mm -hmm. They thought that if they could cripple the American battleships and the aircraft carriers that they thought were in there, but they actually moved out two days before, but they knew the battleships were in there. If they could cripple the battleships in Hawaii, they could do a preemptive strike and take out the Philippines, Mm -hmm. Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Vietnam in one foul swoop before the Americans can use their fleet to fight the Japanese one and thus slow it down in its island hopping campaign. So, 1941, here we are. The moment comes, the Japanese strike Pearl Harbor, pulling America into the war using a surprise attack. America were not in the war yet. Where is Pearl Harbor? In Hawaii. Oh, okay. Right next to the United States. Yeah. So Pearl Harbor's in Hawaii. So Japan travels all the way from Japan Takes Damn, ex- they went all the way over there. I know, it's a long way. They had to go around the whole wall. Um, they traveled halfway across the Pacific. They snuck carriers there, carrying hundreds of planes armed with torpedoes, bombs, all that kind of thing. Flew them off the carriers. The planes flew for like two-ish hours. Mm-hmm. Struck the fleets in Hawaii. Yep. Destroying multiple battleships, I want to say, but I'm going to quickly check that first. He's going to cite his sources? I'm going to cite some sources before I claim how many they actually destroyed, um, because I don't want to... Here we are. Um, So they destroyed eight battleships and 188 aircraft and 2,400 civilians were killed. Um, The Japanese gambled that if they had hit the Americans so hard first that the Americans would just surrender. They'd be like, okay, we'll enter negotiations. Maybe we'll start retrading with you. We'll trade some islands, something like that. But um, they didn't do that. They were like, this is um, probably not a good idea. The Japanese at the time knew they could not face a long conflict with the Americans, which is why if they had hit them hard straight away, lightning striked the islands that they could hold for long enough that maybe Germany could do something yeah, right. to, to, because if Germany had, let's say made the United Kingdom and the Soviet Union surrender at the time, mm-hmm. the Americans would not have continued this war on their own. There's no way they would be way out too outnumbered, outgunned everything. Who wouldn't or, have? So the, ja- the, um, the Germans, because the Japanese and the Germans allied with each other just after this conflict. The Japanese. Okay, yeah. The right. Japanese, and at the time, Nazi Germany. Mm-hmm. Germany owned a lot of Europe. Okay, they were right. just planning to invade the Soviet Union. Yeah, okay. That's United- where I was confused there, because I was looking at that map and I was like, how is Germany doing all this? No, He's so little guy. Germany at the time, yeah. Nazi Germany, yeah, right. um, was doing the whole invade Europe thing, mm-hmm. um, was just beginning to invade the Soviet Union, was going very well. The Battle of Britain was well underway. The British were being bombed into oblivion. All the Japanese needed to do was make sure the Americans could not pull them into a long, long war of attrition because the Japanese would not win. They do not have the arms supply to keep up with them. Yep. They're also still at war in China. Their forces are spread thin, right? 
So the Japanese are like, we'll strike them quickly in Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. We'll eliminate their fleet, or at least as most of it that we can, so they can't face us in open combat. And then we'll lightning strike the islands. Okay. They ended up taking all of this. Japan owned everything from practically, uh, let's have a look here, the Marshall Islands. I'm quoting for the people at mm -hmm. home. Jack can see what I'm quoting. Yeah? Yeah. Marshall Islands, all the way across to about here in India. Mm -hmm. They owned all of this. So they took everything. Yeah. Australia isolated on its own. Mm -hmm. Nothing to so America couldn't come here because all of these islands were controlled by the Japanese fleet at the time. Yeah, right. The British all the way over here, their fleet's busy tangling with the Italians, the Germans, making sure that a naval invasion didn't take place because they were still on the back foot at the time. Australia isolated on its own, attempting to fight in Papua New Guinea. Mm. Um, and that's where a lot of the Port Moresby combat and the Anzac kind of like mentality comes from. Um, in World War One, it was obviously Turkey and Gallipoli and stuff. And then here you've got Papua New Guinea. Mm. Um, so that was kind of like the opening moves of the war. Over time, the Japanese and the Americans were fighting back and forth. The uh, Australians were told to defend Singapore. They were classed to defend sections of Malaysia as well. This funny little island here in <laughs> Borneo. Um, the Dutch. Borneo sticks out to me and I'm not sure why. Yeah. The Dutch at the time um, were the controllers, uh, the, the invaders, the colonizers of Indonesia. Um, but it had a huge amount of rubber, which was required for wheels on vehicles, mm. um, as well as a lot of equipment. They also had a huge amount of oil, which was required for the Japanese Navy. So the Japanese struck so fast, defeating the Philippines, taking all of Indonesia, sections of Singapore. Thailand was forced as a puppet. Myanmar or Burma at the time was gone. Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia all occupied by the Japanese, um, thus also opening a southern front to China as well. So Japan had a hell of an empire on their hands so they point. had all of basically what is all above australia yep. and below china and then right of india yeah right so okay, yeah. all of this yeah okay wow huge amount of land but you know what they didn't have uh resources these islands these islands oh yeah these right. islands and hawaii and big big america yes Ura. the united states um well attempted to survive um, the British lost two major battleships. Oops. Um, <laughs> Oops. They were fucked by the Japanese uh, off John, Malaya. John's saying the two British lost, uh, the British lost two big battleships. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> John's Oopsies. like, I was playing Angry Birds. So the British, the Dutch, the Americans, and the Australians formed a united, like, uh, command system. Kingdom. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Different thing. Um, they formed like a united command system to try and defend and slow down the pushes in this area because the British needed to ship soldiers, the Australians needed to mobilize, New Zealand's need to mobilize, and the Americans need to, well, get their finger out of their ass and fix their boat so they just got sunk. Um, <laughs> patch them up. Yeah, exactly. Get them fixed. Get the water out. So, um,. War rages on for 1941. Pretty much all of the allies are on the back foot. Everyone's losing. The good guys are losing. Japan is kicking her ass, mm. right? Everywhere. We're losing resources after resources, major cities. Hong Kong, gone. Singapore, gone. All of Indonesia, gone. Australia. Bar uh, Darwin's getting fucking bombed the shit out of by oh, the Japanese. Oh, not Darwin. Yeah, so they targeted Darwin. They're already not dealing with, like, snakes and shit. <laughs> in hot weather. No. So they bombed Darwin not because they deemed Australia as an invasion plan. They never were going to invade Australia as far as we were aware. Um, it's way too big, far too much land to occupy, especially with Japan being spread as thin as it was. And they got to fight against it. And they this. had to fight against the kangaroos. And we'd hate for a Japanese emu war. That would be awful. Um, <laughs> they so saw what, they did, what happened to us and they were like, fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> So what they did is they invaded uh, all of the land above here. However, the Allies were launching bombing strikes from Darwin. Ah, really gotcha. up northern uh, area, easily supplyable by boat and plane. Um, quite a large lot of land for uh, airfields. Mm -hmm. So they launched bombing strikes at them. So the Japanese responded with their own. Yeah. I'm not sure how many they killed. Uh, let's see if we have 240 people. They killed 240 people uh, on their bombing runs. Mm. Um, bit rough. The um, 
You know what my f- in- initial thought was when you said 240 people? I was like, oh, not too bad then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, a lot of people in Darwin, as far as I'm aware, um, see it as quite like a big thing in the city still. I could imagine. Yeah, yeah. it's I quite mean, like, like a, an important Nothing really moment. goes on in Darwin. I don't oh, really? Mean, so. No. Um, after this, uh, the Battle of the Java Sea took place, which was when the Dutch Navy was uh, practically handed its ass, like completely. Um, the Japanese fleet completely fucked them. Um, destroying what was left of the British forces uh, or the British Navy in this area, destroyed the entire Dutch Navy and some American ships as well, some Australian ones as well. So um, the Japanese firmly controlled this at this point. 1942, we're seeing pretty comfortable Japanese victory at this point. Um, There's not a lot that can really go wrong for them. Um, (laughs) That was until. Um, They were held in uh, India. They couldn't move. River lines, jungles, duh, mountains was fucked in this mm. area. Um, the Australians were there. The Indians were there. Uh, Canada supplied soldiers, obviously at the moment being part of the Commonwealth, uh, mm. was uh, there to defend the British. So, um, And India at the time was British colonial land. So um, there were the entire Commonwealth was there defending India. Um, this land was fucked. There was no point. And Australia was practically holding its own. Yeah, kind of just um, vibing. Yeah, it's just chilling. Um, getting bombed and besides that, you know. Darwin. Yeah, yeah, just chilling. Yeah, I mean, who cares about Darwin? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the Philippines were gone, uh, taken obviously. Um, the so uh, we have a nice little excerpt here about the threat to Japan. Um, Australia was ill prepared for an attack, lacking guns, any modern fighter craft, and bombers, and no aircraft carriers. Calling for reinforcements from the British, however, uh, John Curtin, um, when asking for this, was denied by Churchill, as Churchill said, we need forces in the homelands. So Australia was on its own. Mm. Um, Although receiving as much support as possible later in the war, um, for instance, during the uh, attacks in this area in 1943, 22,000 Australians were captured um, and 8,000 died in captivity just in this small combat alone. Um, so we're talking like tens of thousands of Australians being committed to the Pacific War currently. So um, like when when I heard that news of like Churchill wasn't gonna help Australia, I messaged John and I said, "What's going on up there?" Yeah, big I was John, like, "Big John Kern." No, you, John. Me. Yeah. yeah, I messaged you and I said, "Can you fix? Can you help?" Back in like, forties. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You messaged me on what the Telegram? Skype. Skype. That was. Around te- back you then. telegraph you like, beep, 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 beep. I like got the and message it was, and I was like it was a message what the fuck he read is it, going on <laughs> he read it out it said you up <laughs> and I was like you up I'm lonely <laughs> and then uh, you were like yeah so Barwin Barwin Darwin just got bombed yeah um John Curtin let us <laughs> Darwin know got that- bombed send pics <laughs> send- <laughs> Churchill not doing shit plus help and I'm like <laughs> and you get the message out saying, not my problem. Yeah, not my problem. Sucks to suck. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a skill issue. Yeah, skill issue. Um, anyway, um, 15,000 soldiers captured around Singapore when it was lost. Um, John Curtin reckoned the Battle of Australia would soon follow. Um, it didn't. Um, Luckily. However, don't know if you knew this. You see Papua New Guinea, mm-hmm. this green bit here, yeah. all owned by Australia during World War II. It was British colonial land given to Australia to govern. So technically, this was an extension of Australia, the same way Let's Tasmania go. is now. So Papua Australia Guinea- had extra land. <laughs> we weren't so, just a big floating island. Papua New Guinea at the time um, was under massive threat by the uh, by the Japanese army. Uh, well, navy technically, because the navy were the ones committing uh, troops to this area. Mm-hmm. They had landed troops all up and down the Dutch land. Yeah. Now they landed them in Madang in northern Papua New Guinea. The Australians reinforced through Port Moresby. And Port Moresby, if you read about it a little bit, if you guys want to Google it at home, or if, uh, Jack, you want to look it up yourself, or if you even go to pretty much any Anzac memorial or uh, museum or anything, Port Moresby is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Because the people of Papua New Guinea helped the Australians um, in practically fighting a guerrilla war against the Imperial Japanese Navy. Um... Uh, and, uh, I mean, let's have a look. Port Mo- um, Japanese declared a seaborne invasion of Port Moresby. Uh, a huge amount of Japanese bomber aircraft bombed the shit out of it first. Um, 
The Australian forces were put under Douglas MacArthur. Um, if you Google a funny picture of him, he has a massive fuck off pipe, huge sunnies, and a cool hat. He's the most American Sounds- looking man you could ever see. <laughs> he was Sounds about right. He was very ura kind of guy. <laughs> um, and they were able to uh, win. Uh, they were able to hold the Japanese in uh, Papua New Guinea long enough for the Americans to win the Battle of Midway. Now, the Battle of Midway. Ooh, what's where that, is, Jack, you ask? Where is Battle of Midway? Battle of Midway. So Midway Island. Uh, I think it might be on your side, actually. Is it over here somewhere? Is that up here? Oh, yes. Midway, so Midway? Islands. Cool. Yeah. So. That's basically around the Hawaiian Islands. Yes. Near, it's... Uh, like, northwest of Hawaii. Nice. Love that. So the uh, second phase of the Pacific War. The Allies, they're licking their wounds. They've had their ass handed to them. It's looking a bit sticky in the Pacific. Australia is scared as fuck that it's going to be invaded next. India is well underway in invasion. China is um, doing China things, um, still getting, unfortunately, quite ravaged. So, the Americans have pulled their finger out their ass. Their ships are back in action for the most part. Um, and they've decided, okay, we're going we're gonna to do some revenge. So they did what was called the Doolittle Raid. Oh, what a cool little plan. <laughs> they sailed. We do a little raiding. <laughs> they sailed an aircraft carrier to about 200 kilometers out from Japan. They got these massive fuck-off bombers that were never meant to be launched from an aircraft carrier, emptied everything out from inside them. <laughs> they were empty except for the pilot seats and the bombs. Yeah. And they took them off from an aircraft carrier. They were never meant to come off an aircraft carrier, so they had to make them super light. They were able to get off. Their plan was to bomb Japan, then land in China. The planes take off. They go toward. They had to take off early because they were spotted, which means they did not have enough fuel to come back. Yeah, right. Everyone who signed up volunteered to the Doolittle raid knew they were not coming home. Wow. But as uh, an act of revenge, defiance, they were like, we're going to firebomb Japan because we need to prove to the Japanese people they're not invincible. Mm. We need to put Japan on the back foot. We need to scare them. That's because insane. Japan is home, right? It's so, not one of these islands they're fighting over. It's not, yeah, oh, no, right. we lost fucking Samar in the Philippines. No one gives yeah. a shit. You firebomb Tokyo. Sorry, all of the Filipino listeners. Yeah, sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> you firebomb Tokyo, you're letting the Japanese people know they're not invincible. Yeah. They're not immune, right? It also shows the world that the Japanese are not uh, invincible. Because at this point, no victories. Well, yeah. They were losing everywhere, right? So they took off. They bombed Tokyo. A lot of them did not make it into China. Mm. Uh, I think like two or three planes landed in fucking China. I don't even... Uh... Yeah, so 16 bombers took off. So, oh, I completely lied. 970 fucking kilometers they traveled. <laughs> How much did you say? <laughs> like 200. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they traveled like a lot. Like yeah, a right. lot, a lot. Um, it had major psychological repercussions on uh, Japan, exposing the dangers of the homeland to the American carrier forces. Mm. That spurs M- Admiral y- was it? Was it? Was it? Was yeah, Yamoto, Admiral Yamoto, all big man a, in the Japanese Imperial Navy. That guy's got a big helmet Dude, on. <laughs> that man, about seventy medals on his chest, bro, and also this three guy, bandoliers. <laughs> this guy, top shit, right? Mm. So much so that he was the man they named the uh, super ca- the super battleship after. So the heaviest ship that was ever built in like ever. It's called the the Yamoto, named after him, Yamoto. Um, uh, scary, scary boat. Anyway, he's like the leader of the Imperial Navy at the time of Japan, and he's like, okay, we need to we need to deal with these carriers because if they can just show up and bomb Japan, mm-hmm. we're in big trouble. Yeah, right. This spurs them into action. Bunch of meetings and shit, and they were like, "Okay, we need to, we need to fuck up the uh, American fleet here." So, uh, Port Moresby fight still going on. This is in May of 1943. Um, they're still fighting in Port Moresby down there. Pretty much the last surviving bastion of the mm. Pacific at the moment, and it's being held by Ura Australia. They're holding I firm. Think, I maybe. don't think we do Ura over here. We <laughs> get a scan on. They're, that's, ho- that's <laughs> they're holding firm. Um, bunch of American aircraft carriers hanging about here. The Japanese find one, sink it. USS Lexington gone, blown it up. That's 
really bad. Mm. The Americans are like, oh, fuck. They can actually fuck us up here. So, this is the fun bit. Midway. This is where we start winning. Yeah, over there. I'm pointing it out. We start there. winning, right? We're going to start winning now. This Yay. is the bit where the Americans are like, okay, let's do something about this. They broke the uh, Japanese ciphers. So they started being able to figure out what every secret message coming out of Japan meant. Oh. <laughs> they were like, yeah, exactly. God. So everything that was coming out Oh, we're good. We're back. Okay, fuck. That's so good. Um, so That was close. We are recording. We record the podcast on a laptop. Yes. And... The problem was that when we were moving everything around, we forgot to plug we the plug laptop in. back in. So the laptop died, but luckily everything's like still here. So All I right. think we're okay. So, <laughs> where were we? Oh, yeah. About um, the midway. The midway. big point. The big yeah. thing. The Americans. Wait, turn, probably. Like, it's I fucking boiling in there. I was going to say, I started sweating. Yeah, man. It's, it's the battle of midway. It gets you sweating. You're like, holy shit, this is it. We're winning, boys. This is it. We're going to start winning now. Thanks for uh, listening in, guys. I hope you guys are as uh, into this as I am, because holy shit, we're about to turn it around, boys. If you guys are following around on the map, Midway is just next to Hawaii, as we've mentioned before. Tiny, tiny little island. Yeah, anyway, okay. the Americans yeah. owned it at this point. So this was the American side of the Pacific. And the uh, Japanese uh, cipher, as I said, had been cracked by the Americans. So every... Uh, Every email or uh, sex that Japanese sent out saying, hey, you are, I'm, I'm lonely. Um, the Americans would be like, we can see this. This is weird. Um, so, yeah, they are selling the information of the Japanese to themselves. And uh, they can see every message that Japan are doing. Now, wow. Japan was sending out a message. It was like, so the Americans said the water tower has stopped working on Midway. They sent a decoy message to themselves. The water tower stopped working. The Japanese then received a message saying the water tower in this company or the water in this company has stopped working. Mm. And so the Americans instantly knew they're going for Midway next yeah, right. because the Americans sent a fake thing saying, oh, the water tower is broken. And yeah. then the Japanese and then received a message. That, the water in this company has stopped working. And the Americans are like, they're going for Midway next. We know it. Yeah, right. So they send two aircraft carriers north mm. right they sit them up here the japanese send their their carrier fleet this way under yamato they have two one yamato's main fleet is heading straight for midway a second one is going like around the top right the main fleet under nimitz i think at the time so there was one american carrier fleet that went north and one that was going straight for midway it hid like below it yeah when they presumed the Japanese fleet would show, would show up. They sent scout planes from the northern fleet south to go find it. What had actually happened is the main fleet had left Japan. The secondary fleet left an hour later than it should have. If the secondary fleet had launched when it was meant to, its planes would have been in range to completely counter the situation that unfolded. However, what actually happened was that the planes that were launched from the northern fleet that were trying to find the Japanese aircraft carriers couldn't see them. When they turned around to return, <laughs> they caught the fucking fleet completely unaware. Mm. They dive on the Japanese fleet, one of the air wings. Multiple other the air wings start being able to intercept because radio transmissions are sent back to the Americans. We found the Japanese fleet. They're coming. Two, no, th four. Four Japanese aircraft carriers were in this region at the time. Yeah, it was a thousand kilometer like range that everyone was looking around at. They were like, where the fuck is everything? <laughs> um, so... They survived, they, uh, yeah, surprised the carriers. They sink three aircraft carriers. The Americans have sunk three of the Japanese aircraft carriers. That is Hoorah, huge. Baby. <laughs> like, that move, incredible, right? Like, holy shit, that is actually completely game-changing for the Americans. It's now the first time the Americans outnumber the Japanese on the sea since the beginning of the war. That does not include the support from the British, the, mm. ja the Netherlands, and the Australian fleets, because Australia did have a small carry uh, cruiser fleet at the time. Yeah, we had a little, a little, canoe. little a couple of little dinghies, right? <laughs> so 
three of the fleets, the Soyu, the Kaga, and the Aka and the Ak- Akagi are sunk. Now, what I love about this story, right, one of the pilots of the dive bombers <laughs> said the Japanese, because the Imperial Japanese Navy fleet, um, its flag is actually now the current flag of Japan. So just the white with the red circle, mm. that was the Imperial Navy fleet at the time. Right. Because uh, the actual Japanese flag at the time was the Rising Sun, which is now deemed as like a fascist okay, flag. Yeah. yeah. So now the national flag of Japan is what was the Imperial Navy fleet. Right. So the Imperial Navy fleet was just the big red circle. So they painted big red circle on their aircraft carriers. It's just a giant oh, fucking no. target. <laughs> oh, no. Right? So... <laughs> The dive oh. bombers, where they were interviewed afterwards, were like, yeah, it's greater than to just paint big fucking circles yeah. for us to aim at on their bow. Now, the thing that really fucked them in this attack, mm. the Navy, the Imperial Japanese Navy, were like, oh, there's no there's no aircraft carriers here. There's no fleet when they showed up to Midway because there was no one there. So they were like, yeah. okay, we'll change all of our planes from torpedoes to bombs because torpedoes aren't going to be useful on land and yeah. we're not fighting a Navy. So they're in the middle of refitting these planes. Mm-hmm. They get the news that dive bombers are coming in. They're like, oh, the Navy is here. We'll swap back to torpedoes. There are now bombs and torpedoes everywhere, yeah. just <laughs> loose on the inside of, of the main aircraft carrier of this fleet. That's One bomb goes yeah. through the middle of it. <laughs> entire thing split in half. Yikes. One bomb straight on that beautifully painted target for them. <laughs> whole aircraft carrier split in half that's the flagship of that first navy so that means they have no command structure mm. it's a complete mess everyone's doing fucking donuts <laughs> to dodge the bombs there's torpedoes flying all over the fucking place all of this caused by planes by the way there's not an actual ship on ship combat mm. it's just dive bombers from the aircraft carriers this conflict showed how important it was to be mobile with an aircraft carrier. Yeah, because man. a plane can travel far quicker than a boat, it can find it, and you don't risk your own ships by sending in a thousand planes mm. because your ships that take, I, I don't know, months and months and months. Like Realistically, in the middle of a war, it would have taken like a few months, but before that, maybe a year, two, to build one of these boats. Yeah, right. It takes not even a day for them to build like 20 planes, right? Oh completely easy right mm. and if one of those planes that they built 20 of in a day takes out a whole fucking aircraft carrier <laughs> that would take years to build yeah. and design huge payoff so when they sink three of them in one fight the th- the fourth one sends out a counterattack. it's almost sinks that's when one... they start rubbing off the the big red target on yeah they're like oh, fuck. <laughs> They just got on the sponge. deck, like, scrubbing away. <laughs> like, oh, this was such a stupid idea. <laughs> I'm fucking firing a painter when we get home. Um, the one that left, the Hiryu? Hiryu? I don't know. It has a weird line of the U. It sends back uh, a counterattack to sink one of the aircraft carriers that uh, attacked them. Mm-hmm. It damages the Yorktown, which was a, a very famous aircraft carrier at the time, so much it's like half in the water. It's it's hit by, I don't know how many fucking, does it say here? No, it doesn't. Oh, that's so annoying. Because I, I swear I'm paraphrasing here and you'll have to look it up yourself, guys, but I know it fucked it up. Mm-hmm. It ended up like launching like seven or eight torpedoes and they all hit this, like this, this aircraft carrier. Thing was like half in the water and he's like, oh, we sunk it. Anyway, the motherfucker lives. <laughs> he's sailing home. And do you know what kills what it? A little submarine in the area. A little mm. submarine just goes, boop, and launches <laughs> four torpedoes at it, sinks it permanently. So the Americans lost one aircraft carrier. The Japanese lost three of their super carriers. We're talking big boys, yeah. okay? Which take how long to make? Like multiple years. Yeah. And one plane is like, you can build one out of 20 a day. Yeah, like, right. Um, so the Japanese... So that's like, <laughs> that's essentially the Americans' eco round. Yes, that they was the, Amer- got the Americans. The Americans <laughs> eco rounded so hard they won the entire game in one round. Right? Fuck yeah! They were they were what was it? F- what fourteen down? Fourteen one down, and they pulled it back. Mm. Right. So that was the turning point of the Pacific War, the 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 Battle of Midway. Um, and from there, there were things like the Battle of Guadalcanal, um, which I want to say is over here, but I don't remember. Yeah. Somewhere over here. So there was Battle of Guadalcanal, Battle of Wake Island. Um, all of those near like all Indonesia. These China, uh, tiny little islands. Every single one of these. We're talking like thousands and thousands of yeah, people right. dying for these tiny little islands. Um, there was a guy found on, I don't remember what island it was. It might have been Okinawa, this little island down here. Mm-hmm. 
um, which was the final island that America uh, took before they nuked Japan. Yep. Um, the, there was a guy they found in the 60s, so 20 years later that was still hiding there, an Imperial Japanese soldier, and he didn't believe... I think believe, I heard about yeah, that. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't believe that the war was no, like over. He had no, he had no clue. Yeah, it had been 20 there. years, and he was still living in hiding on this island. That's how dug in the Japanese were. Mm. They were hiding in these jungles. They were setting booby traps, uh, like punji sticks, you know, like in Vietnam and stuff. The Vietnamese guerrillas learned a, lot of, learned a lot of their tactics from the Japanese that occupied them previously. So right. think of the Vietnam War, but in World yeah. War Two, and every single one of these islands, that's what America had to face. Mm. Um, and the Japanese were holding real firm um, mm. up until obviously 1946, 45, mm. um, when a big old couple of fat boys on Japan and uh, it was job done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those things. You know, that <laughs> Oppenheimer movie. Yeah, that one. Um, Wait, that was real? They made that Oppenheimer? <laughs> Whoa, real? they made Oppenheimer <laughs> real? <laughs> They turned Oppenheimer into a real thing. Um, so I kind of just wanted to cover up to Midway. Obviously, I'm like brisking over the rest of it. Yeah. But that was really like the important yeah, turning that's, point. That's very interesting. Um, and like the fact that such a major war took place over realistically what were some islands. Mm. Um, but it was really the first time in modern history that Australia was under like legitimate invasion threat. Yeah, right. Which is the reason that I wanted to talk about it because... Without that battle of Midway, um, we'd all be speaking Japanese currently. Um, like, 100%. Like And unwillingly. <laughs> uh, yes, and unwillingly. Nobody's opening Duolingo. No. <laughs> we, just, we just all know it all That is heart. true. No one is speaking, uh, no one is opening Duolingo. So, right. So, like, Jap- Japan. Japan. Japan would, like, I, I guess, have, like, occupied Australia. Is that what you're trying to say? 100%. Like, if- if this all didn't happen, like if Midway, Midway if Midway had gone the Japanese way, the Americans would have lost their carrier fleet completely. Because at the time, the Americans had less carriers than the Japanese did. The Japanese had more, but they had super carriers and light carriers. Light carriers could carry maybe forty planes. Super carriers was going like one hundred and twenty. Yeah, wow. Um, the three out of the four super carriers were sunk in that one battle. Completely turns the tides. Utterly in America's favor. Yeah, um, Japan also at this point they threw everything they had at that fight, mm. everything, and they lost it all. Um, and because of that fight, Australia still exists in its entirety now. Um, ura. Let's go, <laughs> ura. guys! So, you can't see I'm Fortnite dancing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, obviously what the Americans did in the final uh, stages of the war were incredible same with the uh same with the australians the british any of them um so of on all of these islands okay so as i said they're fighting over like it says wake here mm-hmm. right you you can't even see it yeah it doesn't exist on the I, I literally can just see a little like it, it looks like a dirt spot it, it, from yeah, from where i'm sitting no it's like... here. anyway over islands like that all across the pacific a hundred thousand people were killed just from the US. 100,000 US soldiers were killed. 200 warships were lost. Um, 12 aircraft carriers they lost. Mm. 12. Ah. Mm. Um, China um, held out in uh, I, insurmountable amount of people died. Like 23 million civilians, 10 million soldiers. Oh. Insurmountable numbers. Insurmountable yeah, numbers. It's, it's mental. Uh, the Commonwealth, so Australia, Canada, India, United Kingdom, New Zealand, um, 130,000-ish. So not um, too bad. <laughs> 130,000-ish. Um, we technically, including the naval encounters, lost 235,000 people. Mm. Um, a lot of mixed loss, but that doesn't account for the famine that was caused in India because India was shipping all its food to the UK because no one could feed them in Burma, lost a million people to starvation. Um, Forced starvation. They had no choice but to send their food to the UK because the UK demanded it. Not a lot of people talk about it. It's awful, um, and I'm very sorry it happened. Um, Australia lost three of its major ships, um, the Canberra, the Perth, and the Sydney. Um, Rip in peace, boys. (laughs) Um, There were some light uh, Soviet losses, but eh. Um... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the uh japanese navy i'm curious how many they actually lost holy shit um the japanese army and navy combined lost 2.2 million people um uh suck my left nut you pricks um so uh the 
<laughs> so the Imperial Japanese Navy lost 25 aircraft carriers to the Americans 13. So yeah. the the battle of Midway along with previous uh, battles following it um that really uh, left Japan outnumbered um without those for those realistically those fights it yeah never would have happened. Um lightly covering the tab war crimes um <laughs> um the i mean uh, weren't you saying that there was like the rape of something yes the so. the the so the nanjing massacre or the rape of nanjing uh most famous example of japanese atrocities against civilians during the war um during the international military tribunal for the far east which was like in Germany, they have what's called the Nuremberg Trials, which is where they trialed a bunch of Nazis being like, are you a war criminal? Yes, he killed Jews. Let's hang you. They did the same thing in Japan. Not a lot of people talk about it. Um, so during this, um, 300,000 people died in a day mm. in Nanjing. 300,000 people. So how? how? Because Japan invaded this city, Nanjing. And they just, and they like, just gunned that. everyone down? Yeah. Right. Gunned everyone down, burnt the city down. Jesus. Raped, killed, slaughtered. Doesn't matter. There were it's awful. There were reports of them grabbing kids and just smashing them against walls, like oh. babies. Like they just hit them against walls and stuff. Those kind of things. I don't even have like a joke for that. There's <laughs> that I wouldn't. There's uh like there's like photography that came out from around that area and it's awful. Yeah. Um but yes, yeah, so stuff like that. Um a hundred thousand Filipino soldiers were killed during the sack of Manila, which is the capital of Philippines as well. Um so the death rate for any prisoners under Japanese control was 27%. Um, that is fucking insane because it's a war crime to not treat prisoners of war correctly. The Japanese, if you've, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's a war about like an Olympic guy. He gets, he gets uh, conscripted to fight in the Pacific um, and he gets captured by the Japanese and they force him to hold up a log on his back for like three days straight without water or food. Um, those kind of things. And they do that for fun because they were uh, monsters. Bad. Yeah, not very nice people. Um, uh, not nice. They weren't very Sugoi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I, sh- I shouldn't make Wait, jokes, maybe they did. Maybe they did invade Australia. We are speaking Japanese. I, I, I shouldn't make those jokes, but it was awful. Um, and they did some pretty <laughs> rough shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they, oh, I don't really want to talk about that. That's awful. Um, you did talk about uh, Japanese soldiers. So the widely kids. publicized example of institutionalized sexual slavery the Japanese undertook okay, yeah, no, um, no. was <laughs> called comfort women. Um, they enslaved 200,000 uh, girls, mostly from Korea and China, and they were forced to serve in Japanese military camps to comfort the men. Mm. Um, we were talking about girls, by the way, not women, mm. um, which is awful. Um, yeah. Yeah, awful. Um, 84% of all bombing the Japanese undertook during World War II was against residential and civilian infrastructure as well. So what the Japanese did during World War II is awful. Um, It's terrible. It's not talked about enough because during the Cold War after World War II, Japan became an economic powerhouse that the US almost relied on. And so a lot of it was not discussed because the Soviets became the big bad people yeah, and not right. the Japanese. Um, they just kind of like glossed over exactly, it. Exactly, right. Because everything the Germans did to the Soviets and things like that and what the Soviets did to their own people is awful. But what the Japanese did, it doesn't matter because the things they did it to... What did China become after World War Two? Communist. And who were the bad guys in the Cold War? The communists, yeah. quote unquote. Yeah, okay, so right. When Japan did those things to communists, yeah. it doesn't matter. Okay. Do you, do you kind of get yeah. the reason that it's swept under the rug? Yeah. yeah, it's awful. Yeah, that was, a, a, again, a light kind of half preview of the Pacific War. There was obviously a, another half of which the Americans were able to retake many of the islands in the Pacific, um, many of the very infamous battles, things like Guadalcanal and Okinawa. Um, I would really urge you guys to do some reading of yourself because some of the heroism shown in that period and some of the insane ideal fanaticism seen by soldiers not only on the Japanese side but the American side as well um, was insane. Uh, the idea that Japanese soldiers would quite willingly hold out for 20 years not knowing the war had yeah. ended shows how fanatically obsessed they were with the idea of their immortal empire. Mm. Um, the things they did made them feel immortal and the way they were treated after World War II is quite frankly not harsh enough. So um, yeah, that was that was the Pacific War. Um, pretty brutal period of history 
yeah. to to discuss and talk about. But um, also something I didn't even know existed. Yeah. So. Not a lot of people do. A lot of World War Two is talked about in uh, Germany. And um, I'm sure in America they talk about the Pacific War a lot. It's obscure to me when I was growing up that I didn't learn about the Pacific War in Australia. When I went through high school history here, um, it's not very really talked about. A lot of World War One in um, uh, Turkey and stuff is talked about. Um, some stuff in Port Moresby, but you don't really cover... The greater scheme of things that were happening up here. Um, Not a lot of people talk about China during World War II. And it's quite frankly um, horrible because of the massive amount of sacrifice the Chinese people went through to Mm. exist. Because they were fighting a war of survival. Yeah. You know, like pure survival. It was their home being invaded. It was their land. It was their people being massacred. Um, You know, again, not very Segoy of Japan at the time. So, um I think it was a point that when I was reading about it the other day, I was like, I want to talk about this on the podcast because I thought it would be something interesting to teach you about. Um, it kind of changes your perspective on a lot of the um, the things that happen afterwards in the Cold War, um, the way that realistically it was just a big propaganda conflict. Yeah, um, right. And I'm sure we'll talk about that at some point. Winky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that was just a light overview of kind of the first half. Um, look, if you guys want to hear more about that period of history, it doesn't have to be as dark. We can talk about some other periods uh, or some other sections of the 30s and 40s. But um, unfortunately, history is not pretty Mm. really ever. um, Unfortunately, there are definitely good periods of it. But um, who wants to hear about the good stuff? Right. So, yeah, I mean, all of this shit's so interesting, like just like. You it's mentioning weird to that, almost, right? yeah. I mean, mm. like, well, at first when you were like, "Oh, Germany was, you know, big and scary and like taking over a whole bunch of shit," and I was like, "Oh, it's just like this little guy." We're talking like this, yeah. Much, right? And look at all of these countries here. Yeah, they were all owned by one state. Yeah, it's mental. And what John is pointing out is Europe, like current <laughs> just, a current map of Europe. Yeah. yeah, if you look at a current map of Europe, you can look all the way up to from Moscow. All the way left until like the border of Spain, it was all Germany, yeah. all of it, which is crazy. So that's just like an interesting thing. I mean, I didn't even know that Japan like invaded China. Mm. Like, I, I, like, it's just like <laughs> no, it baffles frankly. me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like all of this shit. I didn't know that, um, that Japan owned like all of the all of the Pacific, the, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it, yeah, it's so cool. It's um, it's an extraordinarily recent piece of history too. Um, or mm. if it's here only happening in the forties, what fifty years, uh, seventy years ago. Yeah. Um, it's not not that long ago. That's a yeah, lifetime. No, I, that's I, I less than a just, lifetime. Yeah, I just right? about that, yeah. Yeah, it's less than a lifetime. Like it's it's not that long ago. Um, and to think how quickly we've forgotten. And I don't know if this is true. I don't know. Uh, it, I. A hundred percent. However, as far as I have been told, Japan will not say sorry to China. As far as I'm aware, there's never been a public apology, and it's also quite widely accepted to just deny it ever happened. They're not going to put out a twit longer. Or anything? Well, Germany Mozart? teach Nazi history in school to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, mm. That's never occurred. Here. Yeah, right. As far as I'm aware, if I might be wrong. Um, yeah. I, I, I will definitely look it up after and I will correct myself in the next podcast if that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, however, as far as I'm aware, Japan just denies it ever happened. And I do not have never issued an apology to Korea, to China, to anyone they affected. So do you think that they would have talked about it if they like had won? Do you think that no. they, like, I mean, not oh. like the bad shit. I mean, do you think that they would have been like, okay, yeah, so we invaded China. Like we took all of like Indonesia, Malaysia In and shit like that. In a good way, yeah. Yeah. To them, because like, it, they, they would have been like, we won because we're, we're, the, we're the shit. But they lost and still won, if you know what I mean. Because they lost, but then out of pure chance, when the communist Chinese took China, yeah. took it over, because even though Japan had lost, it didn't matter Mm. Because why would you tell Japan off for doing bad things to communists Communists. during the 60s and the 50s? You wouldn't. Yeah. Because especially in the US, that's a good thing at the time. Which And the US were the big shit Mm. from the 50s to even now. They still are, right? 
but a lot more civilians due to globalization of media and information. It's a lot easier for people to hold people accountable now. But back then, if the American government tells you that Japan did nothing wrong because China are communists, then that is the truth. Yeah. And that's what you believe. So Japan, very luckily um, for them and to no one else, they deserve to pay reparations to in any way, even just a fucking apology. Mm. Um got away with what they wanted to get away with. So, yeah, that's very and here fascinating. Here we are now. Here we are now. And they still own sections of their colonial land, like the the volcano islands here, uh, like this stuff here, the Kuril Islands up here too. Mm-hmm. Some of the stuff they took off, uh, they took off um, Germany in World War One. They still own it. They never lost any of that stuff. It was given back yeah. to them. Oh, one thing that I did want to mention. So why were, I mean... I I could be wrong even, like, saying this, but why were, like, Germany and Japan, like, working together? Because Japan was at war with the Allies, so the United Kingdom, uh, France, um, America, after they declared war. So was Germany. And was was that... It was purely a relationship out of convenience. Yeah, so did that happen because Japan invaded China and Mm -hmm. then the rest of... Yeah, it was called what was called the Tripartite Pact. So Italy, Germany, Japan, Tripartite, three. Right. Yeah, so they signed a pact after the uh, uh, Japanese invaded uh, Pearl Harbor, or attacked Pearl Harbor. Um, the Germans declared war on America a day later and signed the Tripartite Pact. And that's how they became quote unquote allies. It was more a relationship out of convenience. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, they didn't, they weren't really, they never really worked together. They never fought on the same line or anything. It was just, yeah. we're at the war with the same people. Mm. Sure. You're the okay. enemy of my enemy is my friend. Exactly. Exactly. I'm so smart. God, Sun Tzu, right? I don't think he said that, but <laughs> I think he said where we drop in, boys. Yeah, where we drop sure in. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Sun Tzu, art of war, where we drop in. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. As always, it's a very cool thing to learn about. It's very interesting, especially as it's semi-recent, so it's quite easier mm. for me to be like, yeah, this happened. Yeah, because I can say it happened. We're not talking about Rome, where it's like yeah. <laughs> Romulus sucked on the tit of a wolf. No, he didn't. No, he didn't that. do that. <laughs> he did not do that. But Japan yeah. definitely did do those things. And yeah. America definitely did do those things. And Australia definitely did do those things, you know? Mm. It's easier to talk about. That's why I enjoy 20th century history, anything yeah. from the 1900s onwards, because it's written about properly. Um, and we can actually like believe 95% of it. Of course, there's embellishments and lies, because history is, in fact, Jack... Written by the victors. So, but... um, Who said that? Fuck if I know. Um, John said that. (laughs) John history. John real talk said that. Um, Yeah, so that was... um, That was a brief overview of the the first half of the Pacific War. And uh, the general involvement of people and the things that happened sort of afterwards. Um, Yeah, was there any other questions you had, Jack? I don't those kind of things. I think it's like see that's the thing is like I, I always it's, think about like I need to make sure that I'm talking enough in the podcast as well. But I'm like some of the shit that like I'm I'm realizing that I'm retaining more information than I think I am. Yeah. Like I caught myself like twenty minutes in and I was like, fuck, am I even like retaining any of this? And then like half an hour, forty five minutes in, I was like, okay, no, I do mm. realize because I started mentioning like, yeah, Japan invaded China, like mm. You get it. You Bad do. stuff happened. <laughs> if you, the, the whole point, especially in history, there's so much happening. There's so many yeah. details, so many numbers. Like you don't, like I, for a lot of this, I can quote most of it off the top of my head, but I still have to read yeah. some of it, right? Because. Just to make sure as well. There's been what? So we're in the year, what, 2024, realistically humans appeared like a couple of like thousand years ago. Like, for written history, what, 5,000 BC? Mm. That, like, that's 7,000 years of history. Yeah. You can't consume that in an hour-long podcast, Jack. <laughs> and history is um, happening every day. Exactly. Even 1936 and 1946, that's 10 years of history. Not to mention a war was going on yeah. across the globe at the time. Mm. It's a lot of information to intake. So even if you don't retain all of it, this goes for the same with you guys at home. If you don't retain all of it, that's okay, because... If you listen to one of these and you go, that is kind of interesting, maybe you will learn about it yourself. Yeah. If you, for instance, this is so lame, but my dad is quite into World War II history because when he was growing up, it was something that was still quite uh, very taught to him, mm-hmm. especially being British. 
World War II was still a quite important thing for us. I still learned about it growing up, especially in a small village where a lot of people were old. A lot of people still remember things. Yeah. There was a house at the top of the hill of my uh, village that I lived in that had half the roof missing because a bomber's wheel took it off when it was landing in the field next door because the field next door was used as a temporary airfield. Mm. Um, those kind of things. And you can see the split on the half. Just yeah. dumb shit like that. It's still affecting my life as a kid, right? Um Whenever my dad's watching a documentary like that, I'll always stand at the bottom of the stairs and wait because I'm like, I'm can't, I'm intaking this. Yeah. At the moment. <laughs> this is interesting. And then it'll get to a point that, okay, I'm going to go upstairs. I do this and then I'm going to go play exactly. Minecraft. Exactly. But so. if you are, let's say, scrolling Instagram, looking at some Twitter, something like that, a TikTok, and something comes up about the Pacific War, you might go, oh, I kind of know about this. Hmm. Let me... Let me watch this. It's two minutes, it's, not even. It's a very cool thing to just like, even from last episode, mm. to just be able to say like, um, uh, fucking Remus and Romulus started up the Roman Empire mm. and like ancient, like Rome and all of the shit. And it's like, most of it has left my brain at this point, but it's like still being able to be like, I don't know, a fucking trivia question comes up on the TV and it's like, who founded ancient Rome? And I can You'd be, be like, like, oh. The guys that sucked on the wolf tit. Yeah, like, the wolf tit guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the wolf tit baby boy. The wolf tit soy boys. Um, <laughs> yeah, so stuff like that. And and like I would highly, highly recommend that everyone at home and you too, Jack, if you get the time, if you do catch yourself uh, finding out anything new or if you do uh, come across more information about this kind of conflict, especially in the Pacific, because it does affect us directly. We yeah. were, we are, we live here. Yeah. It's in the Pacific. We were there. We, I mean, well, mm, I mean, yeah, no. true. You did send me a telegram. Yeah. yeah. I meant like, <laughs> I meant like Australia was part of yeah, it. Yeah. A massive it was part just a of it bit. too. Um, Port Moresby, if they didn't hold this, they would be cut off from the rest of the world. Yeah. Like it's a super important thing they, they held. Um, and like, if you, you guys at home too, if you end up finding something interesting about it, let me know. Tweet at me. I'll make a Twitter account just for this. And you can tweet <laughs> at me and you can let me know something interesting that you learned, something that you figured out. Um, or, you know, message Jack and we'll talk about it on the next podcast because I love learning as much as I love teaching. And there's nothing more important to me than learning new things. And if I say something wrong, correct the shit out of me. I don't give a fuck. It's important for me to also make sure I say the right things. History happens every day. We're covering it every damn week, maybe. <laughs> damn right. Sort of, possibly. Hoorah. Hoorah. John, thank you for teaching me about the Pacific War. This is cool. I, Anytime. You said, brief, you said brief teaching of part one of part one. the Pacific War. If there's two parts, that was part one. Okay. Are we covering part two? <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cool, though. I, I like... I like learning about shit. Um, I think, like, I I realized that I like learning about shit after this podcast started. I was Damn like, right. I love I, that. I, I, seeing the map and being able to, like, point out shit as well, the map that you guys listening can't see, but uh, it's a map, like, it's Google a map. map. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, Google it's map. <laughs> Google map.png. Yeah, like, it's. Yeah. it's cool to be able to have John, John pointing out things to me and then, um, like learning about it at the same time because from the last episode it was all visualizing and mm. it didn't really like oh, couldn't really get there. Out. Hang on, I'll show you. Oh, you ancient Rome, Carthage, right there where Tunis is, baby. That orange one, you see that orange oh, thing? Yeah, Carthage. That was it. Ah. Tunis is capital city now. Used to be Carthage. Ah. But Rome they the guys owned they, all this. Who were the guys on the elephants? Carthage. These guys. <gasps> yes, I thought so. Yeah, North Africa. So Rome's in Italy. Mm -hmm. This was Carthage. Big boys here. Huh. Yeah. Awesome. Rome owned all of this stuff. If you guys are home, we're talking. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They were, they it was were big, so bro. My, my brain didn't register. No, it, but no. Yeah. They were big, bro. So if you guys are home, we're talking from the right side of Turkey, right about here. It's all the way to the left side of Portugal. So we're talking about that span leftwards. Mm -hmm. um, upwards, we're talking from about the bottom of Libya all the way to uh, probably like about around ne Netherlands area. Mm -hmm. so they technically didn't own germany um it was like in and out but it was about kind of this area here yeah wow so um they owned That's... what was called mare nostrum which was our sea very cool latin word everything in the mediterranean owned by the romans so they owned the whole sea 
very cool, especially considering this existed long before the times of radio, telegram, mm. any way to communicate with each other, you up collect text anything. Yeah, there were no you up texts. They were actually <laughs> sent on scrolls, and a man had to run along a road to deliver sire, it to Sire, you. sire, sire. <laughs> Romulus is asking if you up. <laughs> <laughs> decree from Romulus you up winky um, decree from Remus I sent you my dick please respond <laughs> and he drew a picture of his dick right here sir I, I, I had sent thee thou dick <laughs> a little bit before that kind of language but um, yeah anyway um, awesome. it was a pleasure to have you guys here um, it's a pleasure as always to uh, talk uh, about random crap in history um, Jack, what do you have to say? It was a pleasure learning about mm. random crap in history. It's, again, such a cool thing. Uh, we made it to episode two, which is huge for Let's us. Let's go, baby. Um, hopefully episode three also <laughs> going to come out. So we're, we're going to try our best. Um, like I had mentioned previously, I covered it on a stream. Um, but of course, not everyone that listens to the podcast watches the streams and stuff like that. Um, I had gotten a new job and it's now like pretty much consumed my life. So uh, a lot less time to uh, to be able to actually do like the podcast and do other shit. But I'm going to try my best um, So because I love doing this podcast. Mm. So. Make sure you rate us five stars on Spotify if you are listening on Spotify. And if you haven't listened on Spotify, go check it out. Go. Spotify is free. You don't have to pay for it. But if you do listen to the end of the podcast, it does give you the option to rate five stars. Mm -hmm. It's super important to us because it does move us up on that chart. If we get to near the top of that chart, we're going to hear a whole lot more people listening to us, which is really cool. And um, then I can... And then uh, Jack doesn't have to work anymore. Yeah, and then we can, can make more job. podcasts. <laughs> um, super cool. Thanks for popping by. If you're on YouTube, leave a comment, leave a like. Um, let us know in the comments if there's something you want to cover. If there was any moments that you found interesting. If there's anything I got wrong, shout at me angrily. At me on X or Twitter or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, get angry at me because I love it. I love <laughs> hearing how angry people get when I make it wrong and you can make it right. But if you correct um, him nicely, then he will... Then I'll give you a big smooch. He'll also be like, oops, I was wrong. Oopsie My bad. Doopsies. But if you yell at him, then he'll be like, ha ha, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> so. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, we will see you guys... In the next episode. In the next episode. Hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> Kisses. Bye, Bye, everyone. miss you. <laughs> you up? <laughs> you up?